Oh, hello. Didn't see you come in here. I was just uh, practicing some of my favorite um, Star Wars music for, as you all know that today is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Stephanie, I'm looking at you. May the 4th be with you. So what better way to um, start celebrating this May the 4th um, <clears throat> other than to play very, very poorly some Star Wars theme music and uh, do a review of the 11 feature films. Um, this is something I do pretty much every time I see a new Star Wars movie. I create the list, I update the list, and um, I made this list back in December when I first saw The Rise of Skywalker and um, I wanted to make sure that I kept the list the same way it is um, because I think after seeing, I had done a little bit of a marathon and after seeing all of them, this was my impression after seeing all of them kind of right in a row. And so we're gonna, we're gonna start with this, but um, I was inspired to do this by uh, watching a video from Ben Shapiro because um, he, did, he does a very, very good analysis of films and, and TV series. Um, he's very into cinematography and and, uh, uh, and films and stuff like that. And he watches them with a with a very keen eye for for a lot of different things, not just the actual story. And so um, we're going to start with with that. Um, and I'm going to kind of do this the way he did it, which is bottom up. Um, and I think that's a good way to do it. I listed them before and top down, but we're gonna do bottom up um, because that is gonna basically just get me more worked up and then we'll just kind of ease into it and then we'll kind of end on a happy note. So <clears throat> I say, let's get started. Cheers. Okay, there are 11 feature films. I am counting Rogue One and Solo as feature films. Number 11, if any of you have seen any of my previous videos, you would absolutely know which video um, or which movie I am talking about in, at number 11. And it is The Last Jedi, of course. It, would, it can be nothing else but The Last Jedi. Where do we start? <clears throat> the writing was terrible. Why was the writing terrible? Basically, when you write a sequel, you're supposed to actually pay attention to the clues and the foreshadowing that the previous story has left you. What Ryan Johnson did was he took all that and he threw it away. And he basically took the main villain, threw him away. He took the main heroes, threw him away. Not really the, the main heroes, but I mean, with, with Luke Skywalker, you weren't really sure how he was gonna play into it, um, but you know, he's, and neither did Ryan Johnson, so he just killed him. Um, the, God, oh my God, it's so bad. I don't even know where, I don't even know how to attack this movie because there's so many bad parts. So the one thing that Ben mentioned in his, which I thought was also really cool, was that, you know, there was a little glimmer of hope for it. And it was, it was like, there was a time when you thought Ray and Kyle were actually gonna team up and you're like, holy shit, that would have just thrown a wrench into everything. Like what, how, how, that, would have, how that would have changed the game and made the story so much more interesting. Um, but he decided, like, he decided like mid scene not to do that. And so like, you can actually see his decisions as you're watching the movie and basically know the part at which he's like, oh God, man, I, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw this on the wall and see if it sticks. Um, and then the end, um, you know, honestly, I think Finn should have died. You know, like, he should have made himself useful and actually taken out that, um, I don't even know what the fuck it was, uh, taking out whatever the hell he was going to take out. And, like, he would have actually had a moment of usefulness, but no, he had to live, and he had to be even more useless in, in the third movie of the trilogy. Um, so let's do the pros and cons of each one. Um, cons, it sucked really bad. Pros, there are none. It sucked really bad. Okay, number 10, uh, Attack of the Clones. <sighs> Some people like to put Phantom Menace here. 
Some people like to put the Phantom Menace at the end. Ooh, I don't know. They, Attack of the Clones was really bad. And it was really bad mainly because the story had a, a good idea, but um, it was very poorly executed. The acting was terrible. And uh, I mean, Anakin and that, he was just a whiny crybaby. So he was like, and like, he, 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 was, he was a really whiny crybaby. He like basically whined and complained whenever he didn't get his way. And like, he's just an emo Jedi with a little hint of Joe Biden creepiness going on. And it was really, really weird. I wasn't really into Anakin at all. Even when he slaughtered the sand people, it was just really weird. Um, and they had, yeah. And, and when his, the way his mother died, it was just so weird. Like she like held on just to die in his arms. Come on now, that's fucking stupid. Um, <sighs> cons, you know, it was, it was just, it was a decent story that was told really poorly. Um, and yeah, I mean, Cradle Robin Padme is just a little weird. I couldn't really get into that either. Um, pros, uh, pros is it, Count Dooku. I mean, I, I had thought this for a while, but I think Shapiro said this in a lot better way than I can. Like he was just like the ultimate libertarian in this in this series and like he's just like he he discovered that um that the uh that the government was corrupt to the core um emperor palpatine is a sith in disguise and he's got control of the senate and he he wants to break away he's trying to rally a cause i mean he's basically reaching out to the jazz and they're like look you guys are got this right under your nose and you can't even do anything about it come join me let's let's take this on together and for some reason they're like no which I still don't understand. I don't still understand how they weren't compelled by Dooku's cause. Why? Because you can't trust him? Because why? Why? You didn't know anything about him. He was the man. He was a fucking awesome, awesome... He was one of the best characters ever. And I, now I realize why. Yes, he was, he was the libertarian, and I agree with pretty much everything that Dooku did. Number nine is The Phantom Menace. Let's just jump into, I mean, everybody knows, everybody knows why this movie sucked so bad. Uh, and it was really because um, nobody was really into Anakin as, as a kid. I mean, except for like the 15 year old Padme who had this crush on this like six year old boy, which again is really fucking weird. And I, I don't understand it. And it's just creepy. I, I don't like it. Um, no, I'm not really. I'm not really feeling it. And so, so there was that aspect. Um, there was that aspect. The, the The story, I think, was actually pretty good. And Qui Gon Jinn is probably the greatest Jedi of all time. And mainly, like, I, you can knowing that Dooku was the libertarian that was suspicious of everything, all kinds of power, dark side, light side power. He was just suspicious of it all and now that you know that Qui-Gon was the Padawan of Count Dooku it makes a whole lot of fucking sense and so Qui-Gon Jinn is the shit there should have been he should have had way more screen time um I was okay with him dying because that was really a setup for a lot of the story but I mean he needed a lot more screen time he needed to learn a lot more about Qui-Gon Jinn um and then there's then there's Jar Jar I mean I heard the theories about Jar Jar being a Sith Lord. Come on, man. Jar Jar was just really supposed to be comic relief, but they took it way too fucking far. It was really terrible. And, and like, they should have just killed him. They should have just killed him, but they didn't. And then you had to stick with it through two more fucking movies. And it was, it was so bad. I mean, okay. Okay. Um, pros, uh, it had the absolute best lightsaber scene in the entire three trilogies. I'm counting all of them. I mean, it was the, the scene with Kenobi, Qui-Gon, and Darth Maul was absolutely the best choreographed music, visuals. Oh my God, it was so good. That was the best scene, fight scene of, of all of the trilogies. Um, and you know, they, they, they made that and they have a lot to live up to. 
And I've heard that there was supposed to be this badass lightsaber scene between um, between uh, Kenobi and the Magna Guards in, in um, Revenge of the Sith, but it doesn't count. It never made it to the screen. So no matter how good that was supposed to be, it doesn't count. Um, moving on, moving on. Okay, so we're kind of, we're kind of getting out. Well, actually, no, we got one more. We got one more. The Force Awakens is number eight. Um, yes, it is marginally better than The Phantom Menace, but marginally. And I'll tell you why. I mean, take away the nostalgia of, of Star Wars returning to the screen, you know, after, after 10 or so years, however long it's been. Um, take away that nostalgia and there was not a whole lot to it. I mean, basically it was A New Hope, with a girl who you had no idea why she was so gifted with the force. There was no kind of hint, foreshadow, or anything of why she was so good. Um, and it felt really manufactured because it was really manufactured. The other problem I had with The Force Awakens is like, it felt like the sole purpose of it was to take all of my childhood favorite heroes and either murder them and or turn them into deadbeat dads. And um, they they accomplished they accomplished all like, all that in one fell swoop. I mean, it was it was pretty bad. Um, you know, you had to wait you know another movie to, to where that Luke was like a deadbeat too. And it's like, come on, man, what the fuck? Like, there there can be good male heroes, Disney. Are you listening? There can be good male heroes. You don't have to take the ones that were good and then turn them into dipshits and deadbeats. Stop it. Stop it. Um, pros, I mean, it was the return of Star Wars and everyone was really excited. Cons, um, basically, it tried to do a little bit of setup for, this, for, the, for the rest of the story. Um, and then if you jump back down to number 11, you'll see that that was just completely thrown out the window. Um, throwing it out the window could have been a good idea if you did it a little bit better, but you didn't. So, yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of bad. Um, and so I think with that, those are the ones that are kind of, um, I've seen them. I'm probably not going to watch them again. <sighs> Maybe I will if there is a, um, you know, a, a Star Wars marathon in my future. I'm not really feeling it right now. So I probably won't watch them again. So that brings us to number seven, which is in my book, Number seven is uh, Rogue One. Some people put this a lot higher. Um, it was a very good story. Uh, the, the problem I had with Rogue One and why it is not higher up is that if you pretend like the data tapes were not mentioned at all, you would really not have a damn clue what anything, any of this was about. You didn't know what the hell they were doing, why they were doing it. Um, and it was it was kind of a really bad movie. Like the, the thing that kept you going was you know that they're going to get the data tapes and you know how it's going to end and you're just really trying to figure out how it all fits together and what's gonna happen to everybody after it happens. Um, so the second reason this was knocked down, this was knocked down like three spots because of this one bullet point, which is that Chirrut Imwe is the absolutely second most annoying character in all Star Wars franchise history. The second most, you know, Jar Jar absolutely being the first. And like Chirrut is like this, he's blind and you know, he's guided by the force and, um, you know, he, I think he has Tourette's. He actually has Tourette's, but instead, instead of saying like, fuck shit ass, like he's just like, I'm one with the force, the force is with me. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. And it's like, it is so fucking annoying. Like you need to take that line and shove it straight in his ass. Like it is just ruin, it ruins the whole movie. Um, let's go to some pros because I mean, it really wasn't that bad. It, was, it really wasn't that bad of a movie. The story was very, very good. I enjoyed, I enjoyed their interpretation of how this was all done. Um, the, the main pro of, is the end and how well it fit with A New Hope. 
if you take like the, the Vader Rampage made basically took this from like number 12 and ripped it way back up into like number six or seven or whatever it was. Um, and the Vader Rampage made everything and it just goes so well together. Like if you ever watch Rogue One and then Star Wars uh, Episode Four, New Hope, right one after another, it just flows so good. It's so good. Um, and so those those two, and, and so you, you have that, there's one more. The the ending to Rogue One. This is another this is another point that um, Ben Shapiro actually highlighted, and I, I can never put my finger on it. But this is actually a really, really, really good point, which is the ending is epic because it is actually more more like a life like story, like a war story, um, because they accomplished the goal, they did what they needed to do, but every single one of them died doing it. Like every single one of them had. Um, knew they had a purpose and they fulfilled that purpose doing exactly what they needed to do in order to to, to accomplish the mission and that that is pretty awesome and you know maybe if I think about this again that might actually bump it up a couple spots but um, right now it's, it's at number seven with at number six coming in at number six is uh, the rise of Skywalker um, the rise of Skywalker is the last one in this series. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, maybe just just go fucking see it. There's a spoiler. Turn it off now if you don't want to hear that um, Ray's Palpatine's granddaughter. Um, so you can just turn it off now if you don't want to hear that. Um, so <clears throat> this movie could this movie ended the only way it possibly could have ended. Um, or the series actually ended the only possible way it could have ended. But see, that's not a good enough excuse to make this a really good movie. Like, just watching watching the movie, I had this thought in my head, and I didn't know what the actual technical explanation was or the technical definition was. But after reading and, like, ranting online, um, the, the term that I was thinking of is deus ex machina, which is the god of the machine. Basically... They can do whatever the fuck they want be and, and have no repercussions because they are the god of the machine. And so, you know, the return of Palpatine, you didn't know how he returned. You never knew that he was alive. You didn't have any fucking clue through the first three or the first two movies. But somehow everybody in the, everybody in the fucking movie was like, oh, oh yeah, I knew he was back. No, you didn't. Like, nobody knew. And this was so dumb. Um, and then, I mean, so... Yeah, but he's he's in this he's in this location where that nobody knows how to get to, but apparently he has this whole fucking army that he's sending shit out of this place, and it, it's the, the setup is really bothers me. It really bothers me. Like this this setup should never have existed in the first place. Thank you, Ryan Johnson. But this is how it started, and so they had to work with it, and so they really ended it the only way that they could. Um, the fact that Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter. It does explain how she is so gifted with the Force. Um, but again, just because that is the only good explanation doesn't mean that it is still a good explanation. Because um, it's not. It, it was a poorly thought out story from the opening credits of episode seven to the final credits of episode nine. Um, pros, prose is that I mean it was a it, it had really great cinematography the, the the movie was very well shot um it was long but I think it had to be long um yeah I mean I I don't really like how long it was either because there was a lot of shit between Ray and Ray and Kylo Ren you know fighting they basically fighting in a fucking simulator and like God, that, that really pissed me off. It's like, they fought more when they were galaxies apart than they ever fought to get, like, when they were up close together. Like, it's so stupid. Um, and so, and then, like, and then, like, you know, and then she, like, kills him, but he didn't really die. And then, then her, her Han Solo comes back and says goodbye for some reason. And then, 
she force heals him and then they go on their separate way. And oh, Jesus Christ, I mean like, did you, did you, why did you cram so much bullshit into one scene? Like, this is so terrible. Um, th this is supposed to be the pros, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, the pro it was very well shot and the music was awesome. They brought back some music from, uh, from Return of the Jedi if, you were, if you're very keen on listening. Um, and so that, that was kind of cool. Um, the final battle, it was pretty cool to watch. Um, I, by that point, I had dis suspended all of my disbelief. And I'm like, well, this is going to end shitty, so I might as well try and enjoy the end. And it was a pretty interesting battle. Um, you know, they finally, they finally like, mastered this uh, battle simulator where, you know, one takes over and the other one is kind of in rest mode. And I, I don't really know how it, I don't actually know how it all ended. I mean, like, they, they were doing some bullshit with the Force, and then, like, all of a sudden Palpatine's dying. And so that, that, that's how it ended. And then she decides that she's no longer... Uh, a Palpatine, she's actually a Skywalker, which is false. She's lying. I mean, she's lying. She, she's not a Skywalker. She, she's a Palpatine. She should just own it. Um, okay, so I tried the pros. It didn't work. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I think I'm going to knock that down a few pegs next time. Okay, number five. Um, Solo. <laughs> Solo is actually a really good fucking movie. Um... I was pleasantly surprised. I was trashing Solo since I saw the first trailer um, because I was fairly sure that they were going to get everything wrong that, that was supposed to be right and they were going to get nothing right at all. Um, but, I mean, the characters in Solo were actually really, really cool. Um, you know, save for, like, the fucking feminist l robot, and the fucking, like, holy shit, man, like, this, like, Antifa robot that, like, wants to, like, basically do social justice bullshit through the whole fucking movie. I mean, th she was kind of annoying, and then, like, I mean, she ended up being, like, a wise-ass um, fucking Navi computer because she just apparently, like, knew the star system better than everybody else, and, like... You know, and when they fucking blew her up and then the Kessel mines and they're like, oh no, we have to save her and make her part of the ship or some shit. And so um, it, it was kind of cool that like they, they kind of hinted uh, because through the whole movie, L3 had this really fucking brass way of talking to people. And so then when you hear uh, C-3PO in, in A New Hope talk about how, how the ship has a very peculiar dialect, um, that was kind of cool. That was kind of a, a cool throwback to, um, to A New Hope. So that was pretty neat. Um, the villains were really awesome. Um, and I've yet to see any scene in any movie or show with uh, Amelia Clark that I didn't absolutely adore. Uh, she's just absolutely one of my favorite actresses. I love her so much. Um, she's wonderful to look at. She's wonderful to, um, to watch act. And her, her characters are very, very believable. So I, I really like that. Woody Harrelson in, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was really good. He was really fucking good. Um, you know, you kind of, you, you got a little bit of foreshadowing that, uh, you know, Han Solo was kind of a badass guy that was only out for himself, but there was a side to him, there was a side to him that actually wanted to do good for a lot of people more than himself. He wanted to be something bigger than himself, even though that he only really cared about himself most of the time. And so that was kind of an interesting foreshadow of how things were going to go in like A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. And so that was kind of cool. Solo, boom. Um, number four. You're gonna be surprised at where I put this, but I put num I put Revenge of the Sith at number four. Um, I almost put it at number three, um, but I, I left I left the one, two, and three for the for the for the original trilogy movies. Um, Revenge of the Sith is very, is, it's the absolute best um, of the prequels or the, um, the, uh, or the, uh, the new trilogy. It, it's, it's the best out of those six. And if you include the solo, the Star Wars story films, the best out of those eight. Um, it took them two movies to get all the garbage out of the way, but once they set up how the Empire took over, 
The movie was very, very well done. The, sh the, the cinematography was very, very good. I mean, Hayden Christensen is a terrible, terrible actor, but like it even kind of, he, he didn't do too bad in this one. He was bad, but not too bad. Um, he he kind of sold the transition from Anakin to, to Darth Vader. He, he kind of sold that. Um, um, and Padme, I think she just gets worse and worse in every movie. I'm glad she died. Um, but uh, the thing that I I really enjoyed the most was um, I I think that the whole the whole um, seduction of Anakin to the dark side was was well done. I don't like the the plot that they used to do it. You know, the whole Padme is going to die, but it kind of worked because you, you kind of knew that she was going to give birth and something bad was going to happen, and so he kind of played on that, and and it was very believable. The execution of Order sixty six was probably one of the greatest cinematography. Um, montages that I can recall in any of the Star Wars movies. It was very, very well done. I really enjoyed it. It was it was incredible. It was incredible. The music, the the emotion that you felt as all the Jedi's were just being mowed down by the stormtroopers and clone soldiers. I guess they're clone soldiers at that time. It was it was um, you could actually feel it um, with the music and, and everything. It was it was uh, it was a little bit gut wrenching when you when you kind of realized what was going on. It was basically a genocide. Um, so that was, that was pretty good. Um, you know, the thing, one of the things that, um, one of the things that Ben mentioned that he didn't understand, I like to elaborate on a little bit, because I think I do understand it, is that, um, you know, he mentioned that, like, he, he didn't understand, like, once Padme died and, like, he knew that, like, he couldn't save Padme anymore, like, why didn't he just try to overtake the, the Emperor there? And I, I basically can feel this, and I, I absolutely know why he didn't do anything, because Anakin was thinking that, like, I did all this to try and save Padme, and I didn't save Padme. I sold my entire soul to do this. And basically, he, he sold himself out, and he knew what he had done, and he was basically, he basically knew that he was a slave now to the Emperor because he had nothing left to fight for. Why would he want to take over the galaxy? The only, his entire galaxy had died. And um, I think that was really powerful. And so basically he just submitted himself to a life of servitude because he had no other life after that. And I think that was pretty powerful. So I think, I think that's why that, that uh, angle was never taken. All right, let's try and wrap this up. So number three, A New Hope. Um, there's not really much to say about A New Hope. It is the original Star Wars movie. It is very well done um, from start to finish. Um, you know, for a movie that was made in like the, the, the late 70s, um, it, it's pretty timeless. I mean, you know, the, there, there, there was a few things that could have been done a little bit better, but I mean, it was kind of a low budget film, but it didn't really seem like a low budget film at all. Um, you know, yeah, um, Alec Guinness as as Obi Obi Wan Kenobi, old Ben. Um, he didn't really think much of it. I think he was wrong. Uh, I think the only cons I can find in that in that movie was how poorly the the lightsaber battle was done. And to be fair, they Lucas just didn't know what he was getting himself into with the epicness of the lightsaber battles. And so I can't really blame him, but that was probably the only. That was probably the only downside and only thing that was poorly done in um, in, in A New Hope. Number two, Return of the Jedi. Um, Return of the Jedi doesn't really need a whole lot of explanation. It is the final chapter of the original trilogy. Um, I think most of it was really, really well done. Um, the the only problem I had with it is it probably could have started after Tatooine. Um, there's another thing mentioned in Shapiro's video, and like there's like a, apparently this other video that talks about and like dissects the entire you know whole Jabba's palace 
stuff going on in Return of the Jedi. And actually none of it made a whole lot of sense at all. Like, and so one of the things they mentioned was like, when you bring, when they, when, when Luke's plan was to send in the droids and offer the droids, what if he did? Like, what if he's like, um, yeah, okay, sounds good. I will, uh, I don't want any Jedi's coming in here with my ass. And then, uh, yeah, that, that wouldn't be good. So here, yeah, we'll, we'll let him go. And uh, I'll take the droids. What were they gonna do? Are they gonna take the droids? Okay, I don't know, maybe. Were they gonna come back in and save them? I, I have no idea. Um, and then Leia comes in, Leia comes in and uh, decides that she's gonna break everybody out. Um, maybe the droids too, I don't know. Like, what was she gonna, was she gonna say the droids are just hot? I, I don't really understand. And Lando was in there undercover and nobody really knew why. Like, how, how the fuck did he get here? Um, and then so all that shit comes out and uh, like all, all that shit happens and then Luke's like, oh man, we fucked this all up. Uh, all right, so now I gotta go in myself. And then was his plan to actually get captured? and you know fight the the rancor and i i don't i don't know like it, it seems like for someone as as very you know in tune with the force as as luke was supposed to be at that stage i think would have seen some of this shit coming and i i don't think he did and i think that was a problem um other than that like other than after all that and like i mean the way boba fett died come on now um it was really, it was really dumb. It was really bad. Um, but what's even worse than the way he died is the fact that there is still this large section of the Star Wars fanboys that actually think that Boba Fett is still alive. I got news for you. He is not still alive. And if anything comes out of The Mandalorian, which is the god awful, most worst show that I've ever seen, it will actually put the nail in the coffin that Boba Fett is alive, because he's not. The only thing dumber than Boba Fett being alive is actually is Darth Maul actually being alive for... I, I could do a whole series on that, a whole episode on that. I'm not going to go there. But that, yeah, that's, that's the only thing that's worse. Um, okay, so now that we're done with all the shit scenes in Return of the Jedi, let's get to the awesomeness of Return of the Jedi. So the, the awesomeness of the Return of the Jedi pretty much everything after they got to Endor was amazing. So the plan, you know, the plan to have, uh, the, the, they were gonna go take, it out, take down a shield generator, awesome. They ran into problems and they got themselves out of it, you know, with some unexpected help from C-3PO, who was basically the most useless droid in the whole movie up until that point. And they got some help from the Ewoks, that was pretty cool. You know, the, uh, the Starfleet battle was, um, it was kind of a side story. Um, but it was necessary because, um, you know, it, it was a necessary part of the story So because the Emperor needed that to show that, you know, everything was falling into his, his plan to, to basically ruin all the, uh, all the plans of the, of the rebels and crush them once and for all. So it worked, you know, the, 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 the star battle, you know, they were getting, they were, they got themselves into a trap, into a trap. Um, and so, yeah, they... It worked. It was really good. Like from the moment that um, Skywalker got on the elevator with Vader, like you kind of knew how things were going to unfold. You, you could feel you could feel that Darth Vader had this streak to him. Like he's just like, no, this this isn't going to end the way that that he thinks it's going to end. Like it, it can't end that way. Um. So yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, that was, that was pretty good foreshadowing. And then, you know, you could actually see, you could actually see, like, if you, if you actually watch the Return of the Jedi and you watch Vader while the scenes in the throne room is going on, there's a lot to be said about how Vader is reacting throughout all that conversation. Um, it's actually really cool. I suggest you do it. Um, the, the lightsaber battle with, um, with Vader and, and Skywalker, probably the third best lightsaber battle in all the series. I forgot to mention this in Revenge of the Sith. The, uh, the Revenge of the Sith, um, lightsaber battle was, was really good. And so I need to mention this now before I forget. If you have never seen the mashup of, um, 
uh, old Ben from A New Hope re recanting the story of of uh, Anakin Skywalker to Luke, and then showing the scenes from um, both Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith and the lightsaber battle. It was really, really well done. Like that, that's how it should have been. That's actually how the movie should have been. Um, so I just needed to mention that. That's really awesome. You should go look at that. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, the rest of the Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah, I mean, the ending really wasn't a surprise. If you were paying attention from the time that, that Luke meets Vader, how it ended really wasn't a surprise. Until you learn that Palpatine didn't actually die for some fucking stupid reason. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, so... It, it, it was really, it was well done, very well done, love it. Which brings us to number one, Empire Strikes Back. Without a doubt, I, I think this is everyone's number one. And the reason is, you were coming off a high from the, uh, you are coming off a high from the Rebels winning against the Death Star. And, um... You know, ever since ever since they landed on Hoth, it was just one problem after another, one problem after another. Shit was too cold. Um, they couldn't get their base up and running at, at, at full at full throttle. Um, you know, Luke runs into some problems with with the abominable snowman, and um, at, the, at the same time, they're discovered on Hoth um, off a hunch by Vader's you know force wizardry. He got a hunch, sends them out there. They were right. The Imperial Walkers destroy their entire base, and then you're like, okay, man, this is going really, really poorly. And then, um, you know, Han Solo steps. He's starting to step up as a as a as a guy that's really not in it for himself. He's really in it for the cause, and so this is this is good. Um, you know, couldn't get Leia out on the on the transport. Got her out on the Falcon. And then things couldn't get bad enough. They uh, they run into some problems, and you know they now they got the empire on their tail. And so they decide they're going to make an escape to his old buddy in, uh, in Cloud City. But who's there but Boba Fett to fucking ruin that plan? And uh, so it's just basically it started off on this high, and then it just kind of rolled downhill, and then and then it rolled downhill and rolled downhill, and then. You know, you had this intermission where Luke is learning a lot of shit from Yoda, which is really... The, the Yoda scenes were really cool. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of philosophy in those, uh, in those Dagobah conversations. It was really cool. Um, and so, you know, aside from that, like, everything was just on its way downhill. And then you got to the end, you're like, okay, we got a plan. Um, and then the fucking Empire got there the Cloud Seater before they did, ruined their entire plan. Um, it, ruined, it ruined everything for them. And then they're, they're kind of like, oh, I don't know what the fuck to do. Um, and so then to, to make it worse, like they're like, okay, we're going we're gonna to freeze Han and Carbonite. We're going to take Leia, Leia as the prisoner. And uh, we're going we're gonna to bait Luke in here and, uh, and, try and, 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 and try and kill him. Um, and get, or not kill him, but we're basically going to bait him and try and get him in carbonite and get him to the Emperor so that he can bow to the Emperor and then we're going to rule everything. Um, and so, you know, there was that. Um, so it was going downhill really, really fast. The only thing that, that basically turned this from a 100% from a downer to a 98% downer was the fact that... Um, you know, Lando was able to get Leia out, Leia out, and he he basically uh, he basically did the coup d'état on uh, on on the stormtroopers and and turned his uh, robots against uh, against uh, you know the, the Empire. He was able to do that, and then when you're like, oh man, how the fuck is this going to get any worse? Then like you're wearing that that Luke Skywalker is is Darth Vader's son. And then he cuts his fucking hand off. <laughs> and then you're like, oh shit. How is he gonna, how is this gonna, like, how, how are they gonna come back from this? Well, I mean, Luke, Luke got a new robotic hand. Um, and then, 
um, you still didn't really know how they were going to come back from this. And so they basically regrouped and then he made this stupid plan from to get Han Solo back and that, you know, well, you know how that ended up in, in Return of the Jedi. But, I mean, Empire Strikes Back, the music, it was, it was the introduction of the, em the uh, Emperor's March. And, oh, I mean... That movie was the movie where where the music started to make Star Wars. Um, that is the story that all other Star Wars stories are compared to, because you know it, it basically had to set the stage for for a trilogy. You know, it, it couldn't just be a sequel; it had to be a trilogy, at least a trilogy. Um, and it gave them a lot of a lot of ways to to wrap it up. And I think they did a really good job of wrapping it up. Speaking of wrapping it up, it's about time that I do so. An honorable mention. Honorable mention, I think that um, the cartoon, The Clone Wars, feature-length movie, but a cartoon, um, was actually pretty good. It's not ranked. If I had to rank it, I would probably throw it somewhere in between, like... Uh, probably somewhere in like the five or six range. Uh, it was pretty good for a movie. It, it did a lot of elaboration on um, on the Clone Wars. It did a lot of elaboration on Count Dooku and uh, General Grievous. Um, but it's just it wasn't a it wasn't a premiere film, so I didn't I didn't rank it. Um, but that's it. Uh, that's all I got for today. Um, you guys have yourself a wonderful May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. I'll see you next time.